Hey everyone, back tuning in to today's video, we're going to have a look at some of the longer range uh, models today. We have the update from the JMA model on Friday, which I uh, missed, didn't do a video on Friday, so we'll have a look at that. Uh, we've also had an update from Korea, from the uh, Korea Meti uh, agency um, for February, the month ahead uh, from the South Korea Met agency. So we'll have a look at that as well in a moment. And we've also had a very interesting update overnight from the ESMWF. Um, so we'll have a look at all of those uh, charts in a moment, I'd like to get on with, but uh, before I get on with that, I just want to talk about the advertising this video as on my page is at gasweb at gasweberfeeds.com if you hit play on the video ad you'll be supporting uh gasweberfeeds.com and thanks very much for doing that don't necessarily necessarily have to sit watch the whole thing all the way through just hit play on the ad and uh yeah when you do that gasweberfeeds gets a uh, royalty fee uh, on what you're doing so you're helping to support websites essentially paying for the website um so thanks a lot for Doing that. So starting off with the JMA uh, update from Friday. JMA Friday is a bit of a mainstay now at Gasweb. This one I didn't do the uh, video on Friday, so we'll ha just quickly go through these uh, charts now and see what it was showing. These, it's uh, 500 mm hour heights broken down into weekly periods. The first weekly period is taken from the 10th to the 17th of uh, January. The first thing to be aware of is that we're uh, upside down with these charts. Um, we're just there. Uh, but you can basically see what it's showing and for the week ahead of uh, this current week that we're currently in um, we're seeing low pressure below average heights blue curves uh, to the west uh, above average heights the high pressure is away to the north and the northeast so it's an unsettled this week not the sort of washout uh, not a deep trough of washout sort of uh, week that we had earlier in January uh, but it is an unsettled week and we're going to keep Atlantic influences going um, through much of the coming week. Now for the second weekly period, which takes us from the 17th to the 24th of January, a little bit interesting then because again, there's the idea that we've been seeing from the Japanese model for quite a long while, which is to cut that low pressure off to the south, sink it to the south and form a cut off feature. At the same time, uh, we've got high pressure up to the northeast and we've got the ridge of high pressure out in the Atlantic. So what's essentially going on here is that the trough is sinking to the south and we're forming some sort of blocking uh, up to the uh, north and to the northeast of the country. That could be a colder signal for that weekly period from the 17th to the 24th. Not a severely cold uh, signal but it could be a colder uh, signal uh, than we've been used from the JMA. So we've been hinting at this uh, for quite a few updates now but we cut that low pressure off to the south and start to get some ridging. And then for the final two week period, which takes us from the 24th of January to the 7th of February, um, quite interesting then because we set the trough of low pressure up to the east. We set a trough of low pressure up to the east and the northeast. We've got a ridge of high pressure, uh, a mid Atlantic ridge in the Atlantic. And we're basically bringing down a northerly flow uh, with that. So quite a big change around as we go through to the end of January and the start of February. More in way of northerly influences. Now, I've got a severely cold uh, pattern because we haven't got a great deal of blocking over Greenland. There is Greenland. Haven't got the orange and yellow colours up over there. So not a severely cold pattern, but nevertheless, it would be colder. I think northern eastern areas in particular exposed to that northerly flow <coughs> would be at risk of some at least wintry conditions, some snow showers at times, maybe some overnight frost as well. But a very interesting update, that one, uh, from the JMA. And we'll have another look at it again when it updates once more on Friday. Um, now, as said at the start of the video, we had a update from the Korean model overnight. This is uh, uh, 500 mm heights taking us through February. Now, it's broken down into early, middle and late monthly periods. So, I assume it's something like the 1st to the 10th, the 10th to the 20th, and the 20th to, say, the 28th. Uh, as it's February. So we'll start off with the early February period uh, first of all and uh, again it's quite interesting because we're seeing uh, above average heights setting up uh, to the northeast of the country over uh, central northern parts of Scandinavia. We've also got a mid-Atlantic uh, area of high pressure and then we've got an area below average heights across central parts of Europe. So I think we could probably be seeing Summer easterly or northeasterly influences with that in uh, early February. Now, I've got the complication with that ridge in the Atlantic. It would at times be trying to bring in uh, westerly winds. Um, so at times we could have some sort of moderation of the cold. But I think overall, that's quite a cold and potentially, at least for the east, uh, quite a wintry uh, looking uh, chart, 500 mm height anomaly um, for early uh, February. Going through to the middle of February, 
again it's quite interesting because uh, we set the high pressure up around the country actually most of northwestern Europe is under that uh, those areas of uh, orange and red so we have got high pressure around the country the core of it though is just off the coast of Norway um, so still up over uh, Scandinavia probably not particularly uh, wintry in terms of snowfall uh, that scenario but I think it would be cold and um, potentially very frosty we would be getting potentially of this east to southeasterly flows I think and uh, it could be really quite a cold middle part of February if that's right some really hard overnight frost again potentially not all that snowy uh, a lot of dry weather um, but I do think that would be a cold signal for the middle of the month and then going through to late February, uh, things change again because we get uh, then the trough of low pressure coming back from the Atlantic. The Atlantic returns with those blue curves. The high pressure, the above average heights, pushed off uh, back to Russia. So we're strengthening the westerly winds then and we're bringing more Atlantic influences uh, through. Now it's not potentially all that warm because I think we're still more or less on the cold side of the jet stream, uh, the centre, the core of the trough, the blue colours, is around Ireland rather than Iceland. Uh, Iceland is just there. Uh, so the trough is displaced southwards. We're still potentially on the cold side of the jet stream, but it is milder, I think, than the early and middle part of February, and it's also much more unsettled. There'd be heavy rain coming in at times. With the trough displaced south, um, parts of the country, particularly England and Wales, potentially, uh, would be exposed to uh, the risk of more. Uh, gale force winds returning but a couple of very interesting updates from the JMA and the Korean model um, today uh, the route is uh, different between the models but the idea is still there but as we go through towards February that's when we get our coldest weather uh, coming through not saying much because we haven't really had any cold weather at all to speak of so far this winter um, but February could well be the coldest month of the winter I think and uh, there is the potential there uh, amongst those models uh, for at least some wintry conditions, some hard frost and possibly even a little bit of snow in uh, places as well. So if you've been a bit despairing about uh, what's going on uh, with this winter where the snow has got to, um, it could still uh, materialise as we get through into February. Now, you might not have to wait that long because uh, we've had a very interesting overnight update uh, from the East Centre of Earth, as I said at the start of the video. I did the video yesterday saying that uh, I didn't think we were going to get uh, any really cold weather uh, this January, and I said at the time I would uh, suspect models are going to catch me out overnight and do a bit of a flip. The East Centre of Earth has indeed done that so let's have a look at it uh, just now um got low pressure over the country there for friday the 17th of january as we move through we keep that uh, low pressure around the country through the weekend but look what happens as we get through to the start of next week the same idea that we saw in the jma mod which is to shift the trough southwards start to set up uh, set up as a cutoff feature to the south of the country and that allows the area of high pressure that's waiting and lurking over Scandinavia to start to push those easterlies through. So by the time we get through to Tuesday the 21st of January, we are firmly in an east or northeast wind and the low pressure is a cutoff feature down across southern France and northern Spain. Now, if I have a look at the upper air temperatures with this easterly, it's not particularly cold, I have to say that. But upper air temperatures with continental easterlies don't always tell you the uh, full story you also have to look at the surface temperature and the dew point because down on the surface it could be a lot colder in an easterly um, than the upper air temperatures suggest that it should be so you would you couldn't rule out uh, wintry conditions from this you couldn't rule out sleet or snow because you would have to look at the surface uh, temperatures and the dew points as well but uh, it certainly is interesting uh, that overnight the East Have is cutting off that low pressure uh, and setting it up that easterly or north easterly flow now it doesn't necessarily last all that long because we get through to the end of the run day 10 we're starting to show signs of bringing westerlies back in again um, but what will probably happen with this because it's quite a strong reach still over Scandinavia 1030 million what will probably happen with that is you start to slide it south eastwards again and maybe for uh, another cut off feature uh, down to the south of the country but a very interesting update from the ECM WF and I should just uh, show you the GFS because that doesn't really agree uh, with this it keeps the low pressure over the country tries to send some of the energy down to the southeast around a week's time Monday uh, the 20th but then we bring more low pressure through off the Atlantic and we never really set up that cut off low 
let down for sale. It all hinges uh, whether we get this season in. The Mars have been flirting with the idea uh, for a week or two. It all hinges on whether we send that energy southwards. If we do form a cut-off low to the south, that allows the high pressure to come in from Russia and Scandinavia. It's what the JMA has been hinting at for several weeks, for longer-range JMA. Uh, we're still not seeing definite signals of it. It's still just sort of hints, possibilities. We're amongst the shorter range models, and it's still there within the JMA model as well, the longer range model, uh, that it could happen. So we're just going to have to keep an eye on it, uh, to be honest. I'm not sure it's ever going to come to anything, this Scandinavian hives, in January anyway. Once we get through to February, things could well uh, be significantly different. But in January, I'm not sure this Scandinavian hive is really going to come to anything. But we're going to keep an eye on it. And uh, I think as we get through to February, that's when we have a better chance, as the jet stream begins to ease off anyway, we have a better chance in February of possibly uh, getting some colder and more wintry conditions. There's still a lot of this winter left, so if you're waiting for snow uh, and frost, obviously it's not going to be a cold winter, but if you're waiting for some wintry weather, um, there's still time. Uh, there's a lot of this winter still left to go. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.